We will now take a look at hypothesis tests concerning the mean of a population. And this has three sub-segments. Test concerning a single mean. And this is what we have already done in the previous section. The difference is that we will now take a look at the Z distribution, T distribution and decide which one to use under what circumstances. We'll then talk about tests concerning differences between means and tests concerning mean differences. These two might sound fairly similar, but they have different meanings, as you will see in a short while. First, tests concerning a single mean. One of the decisions that we need to make is whether to do a Z test or a T test. This decision then drives the distribution that we use. For a Z test, we will use the Z distribution or the standard normal distribution. If we were to use a T test, then we have to use the T distribution and there we need to make a decision on the number of degrees of freedom, which depends on the sample size. And that in turn impacts the critical values. So understanding which test to use is important. Here is a table that should look familiar because we used this exact same table in the previous reading. And the quick summary of what you see here is that if the variance is known, then you use the z-test. If the variance is not known, then you use the t-test. So that is the high-level summary and then further details are fairly obvious in this table since we've gone over this before i will not repeat consider this example fund alpha has been in existence for 20 months and has achieved a mean monthly return of two percent with a sample standard deviation of five percent the expected monthly return for a fund of this nature is 1.6 percent Assuming monthly returns are normally distributed, are the actual results consistent with an underlying or population monthly mean of 1.6%? The way you set this up is as follows. Your null hypothesis is that mu is equal to 16 versus a alternate that mu is not equal to 1.6 and the reason we know this is the last statement where what we are being told or what we are being asked here is are the actual returns consistent with the underlying or population mean return of 1.6 percent so that means that clearly 1.6 is the hypothesized value we want to figure out whether the numbers we are seeing are statistically different from 1.6 percent or in other words is there a statistical significance associated with the difference between 2 and the hypothesized value of 1.6 also given that the null hypothesis must have the equal to sign that would mean that we should have the equal to sign here with h naught and the alternate is simply mu not equal to 1.6 the test statistic is x bar minus the hypothesized value divided by the standard error which in our case is 2 minus 1.6 divided by sigma over root n uh, sigma is given right here the standard deviation of 5 actually this is not sigma now this is the sample standard deviation so denoted by s so this would be 5 divided by the root of 20. Notice that we do not have the population standard deviation. We are using the sample standard deviation of 5%. That doesn't really change the test statistic formula because we are simply using 5 from the sample as opposed to the standard deviation from the population. But the fact that we do not know the population standard deviation will impact the next item. In any case, we compute the test statistic, which is 0 0.35. Next, we have to come up with the critical values or rejection points given a 0 0.05 level of significance. Now, this is where we have to make a decision between a Z test or a T test. 
And notice, our population standard deviation is not known. So we use the sample standard deviation. That leads us towards the T distribution. If you recall from a table earlier, with a large sample size and a normal distribution, we could also use a Z table. But here our sample size is also small. It's less than 30. So we have to use the T distribution. We also need to determine the degrees of freedom, which is N minus 1 or 19. And you have learned how to use the t-table from an uh, earlier lecture. You need to do that now. Say this is your t-distribution. We have a degrees of freedom equal to 19. So that defines the specific t-distribution. Level of significance is 0 0.05. And this is a two-tailed test, which means that we have 0 0.025 in each tail. The critical values or the rejection points from the t-table will be plus 2.1 and minus 2.1. Make sure you look this up in a t-table. Our test statistic 0.35 is falling in between. So the test statistic is in the region where we do not reject the null hypothesis. So the decision is that we do not reject the null hypothesis. Next we'll talk about the rejection points for a z-test with alpha equal to 0 0.05. So there are three types of hypotheses we can have. One hypothesis is where the population mean is less than a hypothesized value and just to Take an example that we've discussed earlier. You can have a situation where mu is less than or equal to 2 versus the alternate hypothesis where mu is greater than 2. Now, in this situation where the alternate sign points to the right, that means that we are going to deal with the right tail. Here, the area in the right tail is 0 0.05. And if you look up your Z distribution, the critical value will be plus 1.65. The other situation is where mu is greater than or equal to mu naught for your null. And again, just to put numbers, we can say mu greater than or equal to 2 versus uh, alternate where mu is less than 2. Here, you will have to look at the left tail. The area over here is 0 0.05 and the critical value is minus 1.65. So this now is the rejection region and to the right you fail to reject the null hypothesis. And finally, this is a two-tail test where mu is equal to mu naught. Remember, whenever you have a plane equal to sign in the null, that means that you are working with a two-tailed test. So in this particular situation, still with a significance of 0 0.05, we have 0 0.05 that is now divided between the two tails. So in each tail, we have 0 0.025, which means that the critical value will be a little larger. So in this particular case, if we have 0 0.025 in the right tail, the critical value for a Z distribution would be 1.96 and minus 1.96. And this highlights a point which many students are confused about, that given alpha equal to 0.05 or a significance level of 0.05, the critical value depends on whether you are using a one-tailed test or a two-tailed test. With the two-tailed test, you have a smaller area in each tail and therefore the critical value is larger. Tests concerning differences between means. Let's say you want to study the difference between the means of two independent and normally distributed populations. Take an example. One population is the returns on all stocks on the New York Stock Exchange. And this has a certain mean. Let's say that is mu1. And the other population is the returns on all stocks on the National Stock Exchange in India. And here, let's say the mean is mu2. 
you want to determine whether mu1 and mu2 are the same or different. Before we go into the hypotheses, let's recognize that there are two possible scenarios. One scenario is that for these two populations, 1 and 2, the variance is unknown but equal. So the scenario here is that the variance for returns on the New York Stock Exchange and returns on the National Stock Exchange are the same, even though we don't know the variance. The other scenario is that the variance of the two populations is different. So the variance here is 1 and the variance here is sigma 2. These are, are different scenarios and there will be different tests for these two scenarios which we will see on the subsequent slides. Let's also understand the three possible hypotheses that we can have. One is mu1 minus mu2 is 0. This is the null hypothesis. So if you are a researcher and you believe that the means are different, to test that belief, here is the hypothesis that you would set up. Another scenario is that you believe that mu1 is greater than mu2. You will set up the alternate this way, which means that the null is mu1 minus mu2 is less than or equal to 0. And finally, if you believe that mu1 is less than mu2, then you will set up the hypothesis this way. Let us look at the first situation where we have unknown but equal variance. This is the formula for the test statistic. It is a little bit complicated and the probability that you need to reproduce this formula on the exam is low, but strictly speaking, you still need to know the formula. Note that we assume that the population is normally distributed and that is an important assumption. If the population is not normally distributed, then we cannot perform this test the t-statistic will not have much meaning. In any case, this is the formula x1 represents the sample mean. So this is your first population, this is your second population. x1 is, is the mean that you derive from the first sample and x2 is the mean that you derive from the second sample. sp is the variance that you come up with based on the two samples. Since we are assuming equal variance, there needs to be one number for the variance. We don't know the population variance in either case. Therefore, what we have to do is compute the variance from the samples. That's why you will notice S over here. The way you compute the sample variance is given by this formula. The number of degrees of freedom is given by N1, which is the sample size over here, plus N2, which is the sample size here, minus 2. The other situation is where the variance is unknown and unequal. So again, the two populations, 1 and 2, this has a variance sigma 1, this has a variance sigma 2. The mean is mu1 and mu2. The t-stat is calculated in the same way, but now we need to also calculate a degrees of freedom, which is a little different from the simpler calculation we saw earlier. This is called the modified degrees of freedom, which is given by this complicated looking formula. Again, I think that the probability of your having to reproduce this formula on the exam is extremely remote. So just recognize that this formula exists. If you want to be super diligent, you can memorize these formulas. Let us look at an example now. You believe that the mean return on the New York Stock Exchange stocks was different from the mean return on the National Stock Exchange stocks last month. So you want to test your hypothesis. And the data that you collect from the National Stock Exchange, the sample size is 20. The mean that you calculate based on the sample is 2% and the standard deviation is 4. This is the standard deviation that you calculate from the sample. And here is the data related to the New York Stock Exchange. What is the hypothesis that you set up? 
your view is that the numbers are different so this is a two-tailed test you would set up a null hypothesis that the two means are equal so you can say mu1 minus mu2 is equal to zero versus the alternate hypothesis that mu1 minus mu2 is not equal to zero then you compute the test statistic using the complicated formula that i just showed you the modified degrees of freedom also using the complicated formula that you just saw then you come up with the critical value from the t table using the point one level of significance and given that this is a two-tailed test you have to actually look for 0.05 in each tail when you do the calculations here is what you should get so the null hypothesis and the alternate we have already talked about this is the calculation for the test statistic and you should get minus 0.84 then you compute the degrees of freedom based on the formula that i showed you that is 48 at alpha equal to 0.1 and degrees of freedom equal to 48 you need to use t alpha over 2 and that should give you plus or minus 1.67 Notice that our test statistic falls inside that range, which means that we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Next, let's look at tests concerning mean differences. You want to conduct tests on two means based on samples that you believe are dependent, such as the mean monthly return on Toyota stock and the mean monthly return on Honda stock. Say mu d is the population mean difference and mu d naught is a hypothesized value for the population mean difference. Most commonly used value for the hypothesized number is zero. Let me explain this by building on the example that I have referenced. So you, you look at the monthly returns over the last 20 months for Toyota and Honda. Clearly the returns on these two stocks are related or dependent. So let's say one month ago, the return on Toyota was 0.5% and the return on Honda was 0.4%. Two months ago, the return was 0.7% and 0.6% and so on. For the last 20 months, you come up with this data, then D represents the difference between these two returns. So this difference would be 0.1%, 0.1%, then it might be 0.7%, minus 0.2%, and so on. You can recognize the fact that the differences can be calculated over the last 20 months. So that is the data that we will be working with. The first hypothesis here, might be that you believe that the difference is different from zero. In other words, you believe that the difference is statistically different from zero. The way you would set this up is mu d, the mean of these is not equal to zero. That would be your alternate hypothesis versus the null that the mean of these numbers is equal to zero. Here is the process that you will follow. First, you will compute the sample means. So the 20 numbers that I showed you for the difference, you calculate the mean. So D bar, that's the mean, is simply 1 over N. N is 20 in my example. And then the summation of all the differences. So this is your standard formula for computing the mean. Next, you compute the sample variance. So your sample consists of 20 return numbers, which are actually differences. And this is your basic formula for computing the sample variance. Then you compute the standard error of the mean difference. That is the mean difference. The standard error is the standard deviation for D divided by square root of N. Now this whole pattern follows exactly what we have done before. Earlier we looked at x bar and did our analysis and followed the process for x bar. Here instead of x bar we are simply using d bar which is the difference. So other than that slight 
modification, the process should look very familiar. Then you compute the test statistic, which is D bar minus the hypothesized value divided by the standard error. Again, this should look analogous to what you have seen before. Then you compare with the rejection points. The rejection points, as before, will come from the t-table and based on the level of significance. And then finally, you accept or reject based on the comparison, the comparison of the test statistic and the critical value that you get from the t-table. I am not doing an example here because this process is exactly the same as what you've seen earlier. And as long as you understand the terminology, you are in good shape.